by constructing infrastructure, for example, you know, fencing off a water pan or uh, drilling a borehole, which you know, can actually be closed off and opened up at certain times. Eh? And also in view of the existing traditional natural resource governance institution called the DEDA, it oversees uh, the grazing patterns. Now the DEDA system guides you know, the community members as to locations where to go to during the wet season. And then as the season changes and moves to dry, they direct them on to start moving to the dry season grazing areas. And then when there's a drought, um, again, the DEDA and there's also a Rangeland Users Association and now directs communities on which sites to actually go to in the drought season. Uh, the pastoral areas, uh, the communities own land communally, and so uh, pastoral communities from other counties as well, you know, move their livestock, looking for pasture and water, uh, and often actually end up uh, in some of the uh, wards in, uh, in, in Isiolo County. Uh, and what I've actually learned over time is that Isiolo, because of the data system and you know, this natural resource governance, has over time been like quite a big refuge for a herders or pastoralists in the wider northern Kenya region. So during drought especially, I have pastoralists coming from as far as Marsabit, from Wajir, even Mandera sometimes. I think even Somalia, you know, as the neighboring country northwards, eh? uh, and Samburu and Turukana. So it's really, um, just, it's, it's open land. And so being able to actually manage the water enables governance of the rangeland use. Eh? And that has a direct implication on, you know, uh, let me say the resilience of the pastoral communities. So um, in a drought situation, especially, uh, if the, the drought reserves, you know, are conserved and conserved well, you find that now, you know, with the instructions of the DEDA and the Rangeland Users Association, the water pans and the bowls are then opened. But when the herders actually now move into these areas, they'll find that the grass is there for their livestock to feed on, but then there's also water. And the system is very regulated in that um, uh, for each herder who brings their livestock, they're given a certain amount of time to water their livestock and then they move away. And then, you know, the other group comes. So it's really done in a very, it's a very organized system actually. And so, because droughts are intensifying, the uh, more frequent now, um, such uh, an organized management system should enable the pastoralists to minimize loss of livestock. The infrastructural uh, interventions together with the um, uh, uh, information on climate, you know, the, so the climate information, for example, timely provision of seasonal weather forecast in a way that they actually is meaningful to them, eh, can help them make decisions. Or, you know, for example, should I actually start selling the, you know, not very strong livestock at this point in time? So, and if we actually provide access to a market, you know, fairly close by, that should really help, you know, be able to actually do the uptake early enough. But there are other aspects as well. There are lots of other governance aspects. So there's the markets, there's the pasture and water, there's um, uh, the, the, the management system for grazing, there's the use of climate information services. Um, all these really, you know, meshing very well together. And, you know, our hope is that uh, as we proceed, Things like value addition as well will come in more strongly. So, you know, capacity development uh, to the uh, uh, communities there on value addition to livestock products uh, because that will enable them, you know, increase their household incomes, hopefully. Um, 
And for me, I think that, you know, with greater household incomes, people actually have perhaps more, um, more options, even for decision making. So they, they have more options to consider and then, uh, and can actually take perhaps stronger decisions. Eh?